प्लीज आई आई विल बी जनता पार्टी इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो आई शुड प्लीज लिसन टू मी यू आर नॉट टॉकिंग एनीथिंग अबाउट योर इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो और इन इलेक्शन मैनिफेस्टो एज ए चेयरमैन ऑफ द पार्टी यू प्रोमिस टू इम्प्लीमेंट काका कालेलकर कमीशन रिपोर्ट then he said it is 22 years old report 22 years old report then i said when it was 21 years and 6 months later you mentioned it that he will implement it then he bluntly said all the promises made in the election manifesto are to be implemented then i also bluntly replied i said you uh, you are speaking in the indian parliament and you are going safe if such a speech as might have been given in the parliament of berlin london paris pm must have been given some rotten rotten x on your mouth so i remember the speech of dr louis he said always he used to say laws are enacted not in the parliament laws are actually enacted on the road in the street in fields only seal is given in the parliament if people not support on the street you can't do anything 9th march 1978 there was a very big uh, ground in gandhi पटना सा सिटी दैट इज गांधी मैदान ऑलमोस्ट टू थर्ड ऑफ दी मैदान गांधी मैदान वॉज फिलअप एंड दे पीपुल कमिंग देम सेल्फ दे यूज टू थ्रो मनी गार्लैंडिंग मनी गार्लैंड एंड ऑल दैट there after i carried the message of periyar this way we went on with went on but after a meeting which that in chennai june 78 june 78 which date Uh, 24 24th june 1978 we held a conference there inaugurated by presided by i am mean, a main guest main guest was mandal dhanik lal mandal he was the then state minister for home affairs from there we have started really now it is can communicate our feelings very easily and uh, let us do something and uh, start some fighting on the road 
nothing can be done national poet ramdhari singh dinkar he wrote a book he said chama sobhati us bhujang ko jiske paas garal ho उसको क्या जो दंतहीन विष रहित बिनित सरल हो इत और मापर पोराटम नाम we have to fight but we have to prepare our forces which can fight and achieve victory idu pondra maanadugal oru padai thiratta koodiya maanadugalaga karutharakkalaga payanpada vendum idu yen solgiren endral oru balavinamana padai बलम वलिमिकर अोड़ मोदी वैटिपे वरला पार्तको सुंद्रकूरावराट नोक सुंद्रेवन ड्यूरी द इंडिपेडन वार the all india congress the congress committee which was formed in the 19th century their main objective was to get due rights for the indians they did not start the congress to fight for independence subsequently it was made a people's movement only after that we could get independence after the entry of Gandhi ji the congress party became a people's movement until then they were demanding for certain rights they were demanding for respect they were demanding for their petitions to be honored by the britishers in fact or sadharana manu valangugindra or amaipaga thodangapatta congress पांदियाारे मकड़ा मुझमान वलिमान आंगेयरा अलिम कलिम एनिकलते एनिकल साधारण मुद्दे करतप उड़पा the people who are present in this august house should believe that what is demanded in this seminar is a rightful demand and a reasonable demand so the, our first priority is to educate the ambedkar sonna idai naam purindukolla vendum onrai adarkku munnale onrai naam telivaga therindukolla vendum every generation has a responsibility towards their successor generation successive generation idrike naam inda nilayile irukkrom endral nammudaiya munnorgal nadathiya poraattangalin vetri nammai inda nilaikku vaithirukkirathu thandai periyar avargaludaiya poraattathin vetri 27% idavudukkittukku udavi seidirukkirathu अकाले तमेंटे आजिकाल सटे इंडिया इट मोलिकार्टि विच रूल दि मेड्रा प्रसिडेंसी कम्यूनल reservation what is proportional reservation periyar's movement showed us what is reservation for obcs now we are enjoying so it is our duty 
to contribute something to the next generation for which we have to take up this cause. But are we, have, do we enjoy the support of 57% of the people of India? No. This concept, does this concept has the support of 57% of the people of India? No. Our first and prime duty is to go to the people and tell as to why this 57% reservation is needed for the backward classes. As to why this 20% or 18% reservation is needed for the scheduled class and 7 or 8% reservation is needed for the scheduled tribes and the certain percentage of reservation which is required for the minorities. So we need not go with the weapon. Our first step is to go with the words and convince our people. We gather in strength. We will make it a mass movement. Then the government will be afraid of us. The government will have to submit to, the, to us. It is our duty which we owe to our next generation. When our next generation comes, they should have reservation according to their strength, numerical strength. अगर हम 60 आदमी खाने वाले हैं, 60 रोटियां चाहिए मुझे, 26 रोटियां नहीं चाहिए मुझे, मतलब 26 परसेंट मुझे नहीं चाहिए। ये ये अब डिमांड होना चाहिए। अब रिजर्वेशन को कैसे फ्लैक्सुएट किया जा रहा है, किस तरह से उसको मोल्ड किया जा रहा है, और कितनी तरह की इसमें हर्डल्स हैं, उसके बारे में मैं दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय के संदर्भ में और जवाहरलाल नेहरू विश्वविद्यालय के संदर्भ में बात करूंगा इसलिए क्यों, क्योंकि मैं इन दोनों यूनिवर्सिटीओं में रहा हूं दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय में मैं पढ़ाता हूं और जवाहरलाल नेहरू से मेरी सारी पढ़ाई हुई एमएससी पीएचडी तक तो इन दोनों विश्वविद्यालयों को मैं बहुत करीब से जानता हूं हो क्या रहा है कि 27% रिजर्वेशन तो आपको आप आप अपने को कहते हैं कि 27% ओबीसी रिजर्वेशन मिल रहा है आपको लेकिन सच में आपको 27% रिजर्वेशन नहीं मिल रहा है कई डाटास हैं आपके सामने आपको जो ग्रेड 1 जो सर्विसेज हैं उसमें आपकी जो भागीदारी है वो मात्र 2-3% का है ग्रेड 2 में थोड़ा ज्यादा ग्रेड 3 में थोड़ा ज्यादा और उससे ज्यादा फोर्थ में है मतलब आप सुद्र थे और चौथे ग्रेड सुद्रों का ग्रेड उसमें आपका रिप्रेजेंटेशन 27% भी नहीं है लेकिन हां ज्यादा है तो इस तरह से रिजर्वेशन को कैसे हर्डल्स में लाए जाते हैं रिजर्वेशन इंप्लीमेंट नहीं हो रहा है ऊपर से कई तरह की समस्याएं क्रिएट किए गए पहला यह है कि आपके ओबीसी में क्रीमी लेयर लाया गया क्रीमी लेयर एक ऐसी समस्या है जिसमें कि आप क्रीमी लेयर ला दिया आपने कि 2500 जिसकी 2.5 लाख जिसकी जिस पिताजी की सालाना इनकम होगी वो एडमिशन लेंगे या वो इस रिजर्वेशन को एक्सरसाइज करेंगे आज की स्थिति यह है कि ओबीसी एक तरफ 2.5 लाख जो एक एक कैप्सूल रखा गया है उसमें ऐसे कई लोग जो है वो आ नहीं पाते और आ भी रहे इस कारण से आप अधिक से अधिक संख्या में छट जा रहे हैं मतलब यह है कि आप अगर मान लीजिए कि क्रीमी लेयर के अनुसार ही एडमिशन ले लीजिए दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय में तो आपकी सीटें नहीं भरेंगी जरूरत यह है कि क्रीमी लेयर की आज की तारीख में कोई जरूरत नहीं मुझे लगती इसलिए कि 27% रिजर्वेशन जब भरा जा रहा हो जब ओवरफ्लोट किया रहा हो मतलब ज्यादा विद्यार्थी आ रहा हो तब क्रीमी लेयर की बात होनी चाहिए थी अभी तो हमारे विद्यार्थी 27% पर नहीं मिल रहे हैं दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय और जेएनयू में तो फिर आप क्रीमी लेयर ला रहे हैं बावजूद इसके एक तो ये हर्डल्स है दूसरे कि आपने अगर एडमिशन ले लिया दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय और जवाहरलाल नेहरू यूनिवर्सिटी में तो आपको एडमिशन तो मिल जाएगा लेकिन असाइनमेंट में अटेंडेंस में आपके मार्क्स कम कर दिए जाएंगे उनके पास ये मैकेनिज्म है आप भले उस टीचर की जाति नहीं जान पाएंगे लेकिन वो टीचर आपकी जाति जान लेगा भले आपके नाम के आगे कोई टाइटल भी नहीं है फिर भी आपकी जाति को वो जान जाएंगे और जानने के बाद 
वो इस तरह से आपका पर कतरेंगे इस तरह से आपको वो कमजोर करेंगे कि आप ग्रेजुएशन के पहले साल में ग्रेजुएशन के दूसरे साल में ग्रेजुएशन के तीसरे साल में जाते जाते आपकी परसेंटेज और आपकी जो 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 परसेंटेज होनी चाहिए वो जितना होना चाहिए उतना हो नहीं पाएगा आप फ्रस्ट्रेट हो जाएंगे आप परेशान हो जाएंगे आप इतने दबाव में रहेंगे और इसी कारण से ओबीसी के जो बच्चे हैं दलित जो बच्चे हैं वो सुसाइड कर रहे हैं सुसाइड पर अगर रिसर्च किया जाए कि सुसाइड कौन लोग कर रहे हैं इंस्टीट्यूशन में किनके साथ रैगिंग हो रहा है अगर इस बात को आप गौर से देखें तो आपको पता चलेगा कि रैगिंग में ज्यादा जो विक्टिम हो रहे हैं मैक्सिमम विक्टिम जो हो रहे हैं वो दलित हैं पिछड़ी जाति के लोग हैं और रिलीजियस माइनोरिटीज के लोग हैं समुदायपे अदारण अमेरिका तेनाप्रिका मलेशा इल प्रन बास्निया प्रेसिल पल्व वायलान मुख्य पटल पंगीटाय उचनीमेंट उल्लूपी अड़कोड़े वायक 
பெற்றவர்களும் குழந்தைகளை நன்றாக படிக்க வைக்க வேண்டும் நன்றாக படிக்கின்ற மாணவர்களுக்கு கல்லூரியில் இடம் கிடைக்கின்றன நல்லாக படிக்காத மாணவருக்கு கல்லூரிகள் இடம் கிடைப்பதில்லை நன்றாக படிக்கின்ற மாணவன் இடம் அவனுக்கு இடம் கிடைப்பதென்றால் அதில் எந்தவித ஆச்சரியமும் இல்லை ஆனால் ஏன் நன்றாக படிக்கவில்லை உரிய வசதிகள் இல்லை உரிய வகையான முன்னேற்றத்திற்கு உண்டான ஏற்பாடுகள் இல்லை அப்படி கொடுத்தாலும் அவர்கள் படிக்க வேண்டும் நன்றாக ஒடுக்கப்பட்ட தாழ்த்தப்பட்ட சமூகத்தினர்கள் முன்னேறி அனைவரும் சமத்துவத்துடன் விளங்க வேண்டும் என்பதே இடஒதுக்கியினுடைய நோக்கம் எனவே அனைத்து பெற்றோர்களும் குழந்தைகளும் கடினமாக உழைத்து நன்றாக படிக்க வையுங்கள் இடஒதுக்கீட்டில் கிடைக்கக்கூடியவற்றை மதித்து ஐயா அவர்கள் இந்த வயதிலும் இவ்வளவு தூரம் கஷ்டப்பட்டு பாடுபடார்கள் என்றால் அதற்கு ஒரு அர்த்தம் வேண்டும் அந்த அர்த்தத்திற்கு மாறாக நன்றாக படிக்க வேண்டும் யாரும் படிக்காமல் இருந்தால் நிச்சயம் அவர்கள் கொடுக்கக்கூடிய அவர்கள் படக்கூடிய கஷ்டங்களுக்கு எந்த ஒரு விடிவு அளவும் இருக்காது ஒரு வீட்டிற்கு ஒருவர் படித்து நல்ல வேலையில் இருந்தாலே போதும் நிச்சயமாக அந்த குடும்பம் முன்னேறும் even one person has to study in the house and to come in a life in a good position definitely it should be treated that the entire family should grow the person who studied in a higher level will take care of everybody we are not only for us we are for all of you we improve ourselves we will also allow all of you to improve the reservation is only mean to make it an equalize in all status of economy education and life and social status the people are in a drown totten position from the very very beginning even you go to the remote village they have not been treated as a equal with others why even some of my juniors have come here and my ananda krishna is there muthu krishna is there and other friends are there even mr swami mala is there and mr mudramalingam is there so many people are here and everybody should know we should give an opportunity to the people to come up but when the, you are getting an opportunity you have to utilize that opportunity to come up definitely if you are not doing it is there is a failure on the part tande periya vishesh roop se ye kaha karte the aur aap sab jante hain कि उनका नियम था कि वो नित्य दो घंटा अपना संबोधन अपना भाषण कहीं ना कहीं अवश्य करते थे और उनका कहना था कि अगर हम सौ लोगों के बीच में अपने विचार रखते हैं और उन सौ में एक आदमी भी एक व्यक्ति भी उन विचारों को ग्रहण कर लेता है तो उसका उस एक व्यक्ति का इन विचारों से जुड़ जाना हमें भविष्य में एक हजार आदमियों को और जुड़वा देता है हमारे इस संगठन के हमारे इस वैचारिक आंदोलन में मैं जब भगवान बुद्ध उपदेश देते थे तो कभी कभी खाली एक आनंद वहां पर उपस्थित होते थे जब जीसस क्राइस्ट ने टेन कमांडमेंट्स का उपदेश दिया तो उस समय खाली दस व्यक्ति वहां पर उपस्थित थे लेकिन उनके विचारों में शक्ति थी कि एक समय आया जबकि सारे का सारा जितना सभ्य संसार है आज से 2500 वर्ष पहले भगवान बुद्ध के काल में तो उसने उनके विचारों को स्वीकार कर लिया और अंगीकार कर लिया और यही कालांतर में जिस काइश के साथ भी हुआ मैं अनाई मुस्तु साहब को सामने अनाई मुस्तु को और उनके सारे साथियों को इस बात के लिए आश्वस्त करना चाहता हूं कि अभी भले हमें जितनी बड़ी संख्या में हमें समर्थन मिलना चाहिए लोगों का उतनी बड़ी संख्या में समर्थन नहीं मिल रहा है लेकिन उनके अथक प्रयासों से और उनके इस आंदोलन से निश्चित रूप से वो समय आएगा 
जबकि हमारा जो पिछड़ा वर्ग और सर्वाधिक पिछड़ा वर्ग और उससे जुड़े हुए जो हमारे धार्मिक अल्पसंख्यक और अनुसूचित जाति और जनजाति के लोग हैं वे एक सूत्र में आबद्ध होंगे और अपने उन अधिकारों को प्राप्त कर सकेंगे जिसकी परिकल्पना एक बहुत बड़े आंदोलन में तंदे पेरियाद ने महात्मा फुले ने डॉक्टर अंबेडकर ने और हमारे तमाम साथियों ने जिसकी परिकल्पना की थी वो अवश्य हमें प्राप्त होगा अभी कामरेड अनाई मुथ्थु ने तंदे पेरियाद के विषय में और मेरे उनके प्रति आस्था और मेरे उनके प्रति जो समर्पण की भावना थी उसके विषय में आप सबको बताया मैं तो उस क्षण को याद करके रोमांचित हो उठता हूँ जब मैंने तंदे पेरियाद के पहली बार दर्शन किए पहली बार मैंने उन्हें देखा और लखनऊ विश्वविद्यालय में जिस सभा में उन्होंने मेरे निमंत्रण को स्वीकार कर लिया आप इससे स्वीकार का आप इसे जान सकते हैं कि तंदे पेरियाद के अंदर कितना बड़ा महापुरुष छिपा हुआ था कि मेरी आयु आयु उस समय मुश्किल से 19-20 साल की रही होगी आई वॉज जस्ट नाइनटीन और ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ओल्ड एट दैट टाइम बट तंदे पेरियाद वॉज हैप्पी टू एक्सेप्ट माई इन्विटेशन यू नो मुझे इतना बड़ा यानी कितना कितना कितने कितने बड़े रोमांच का अनुभव हुआ होगा आई वॉज नॉट ओनली स्टन यू नो बट इट वॉज आई मीन इट वॉज ए अटर सरप्राइज टू तो उसके बाद जो है वो वहाँ पर गए और वो उनकी बहुत सफल सफल मीटिंग थी जो उनका पहला वाक्य था वो मैं आपको बताना चाहूँगा उन्होंने जैसा अभी कामरेड अनाज मुत्थु ने आप सबको बताया कि उन्होंने जो है वो कैसे उन्होंने जो उनकी अवधारणा थी राम और ईश्वरवाद के प्रति वो उन्होंने वहाँ पर व्यक्त की लेकिन उनका पहला वाक्य था संबोधन के के, के मध्य बल्कि संबोधन का ही पहला बात के था कि कड़बुल इल्लैया इल्लै और इसके बाद जब उन्होंने बोलना शुरू किया तो जो वहां के सारे बुद्धिजीवी छात्र थे वो एक प्रकार से रोमांचित हो उठे क्योंकि वो पहले व्यक्ति थे तंदे पेरियाल जिन्होंने वहां पर कहा कि आदमी को कहीं भी किन्हीं भी किसी भी डॉगमा से बंद करके नहीं रहना चाहिए नौजवानों को नौजवानों को स्वतंत्र चिंतन से काम करना चाहिए किसी को इस बात से नहीं बनना चाहिए कि वो किसी परिवार में पैदा हुआ है किसी जाति में पैदा हुआ है किसी धर्म में पैदा हुआ है और या किसी संप्रदाय में पैदा हुआ है मनुष्य को जो है ये सोचना चाहिए कि सत्य क्या है सच्चाई क्या है और वो सिद्धांत क्या है जो मनुष्य और मनुष्य में वैषम्य उत्पन्न करने वाली विचारधारा को समाप्त कर सकते हैं और सिंगलंजेर तेनाटू मकल तीरादि तीरर इन रूद संगे पोंगु तमिलर के इन्नल विलेंदाल संगारम निसमेन चंगे मुलंगु विलेगर मलई तुलीम विदेह नोकी विलेम ईपाले उड़ तलरती को मद कड़े मयंगिक तलेमुकोनूर वयदिया इन पत्र वोल उड़े मणिकंडी इन मे 
அனைவருக்கும் என்னுடைய வணக்கத்தை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்ளுகிறேன் ஆயிரத்தி எட்நூற்றி முப்பத்தி நான்கில் தாமஸ் பெயின்டன் மெக்கல்லே என்பவன் சென்னை கடற்கரையில் வந்து இறங்கினார் அப்பொழுது பதினைந்து குண்டுகள் முழங்க அவரை வரவேற்றார்கள் அவர் வந்த நோக்கம் இனி இருநூறு ஆண்டு கால பிரிட்டிஷார் ஆட்சியை எப்படி வழி நடத்துவது எப்படி இங்கே அடிமைகளை நமக்கு சாதகமான அடிமைகளை உருவாக்குவது என்பதின் கருத்தை நடைமுறைப்படுத்துவதற்கான செயல் திட்டத்தை வடிவமைக்க வந்தவர்தான் தாமஸ் பேங்டன் மெக்கல்லே அவர் வந்தபொழுது கவர்னர் வில்லியன் பெனட்டிங் கோடை விடுமுறை காரணமாக ஊட்டியிலே இருந்திருக்கிறார் அப்பொழுது இவரும் ஊட்டிக்கு பயணித்திருக்கிறார் நான்கு பேர் இவரை பல்லக்கில் வைத்துக் கொண்டு பதினோரு நாட்கள் மைசூர் பெங்களூர் வழியாக ஊட்டியை சென்றடைந்தார்கள் அன்றைக்கு தூக்க ஆரம்பித்த அந்நியர்களின் ஆங்கில மோகத்தை இன்று வரை இறக்கி வைக்கவில்லை அதே போல இரண்டாயிரம் ஆண்டு காலமாக மூளையிலே தூக்கி வைத்துக் கொண்டு சாதிய கொடுமைகளை ஆதிக்கத்தையும் ஒடுக்கத்தை ஒடுக்கப்பட்ட மக்களின் இருக்கிற அந்த இடி நிலையை இரண்டாயிரம் ஆண்டு காலமாக ஆரியர்கள் விதைத்த அந்த விதையும் இவர்கள் மூளையிலே சுகந்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்களே அந்த அந்த ஒடுக்கப்பட்ட நிலையையும் பிற்படுத்தப்பட்ட நிலையையும் முழுமையாக மாற்ற வேண்டும் என்கின்ற எண்ணத்தில் பேரவையைச் சேர்ந்த தோழர்கள் இந்தியா முழுவதும் வளர் வந்து கொண்டிருக்கிறார்கள் இங்கே வந்தவுடனே பார்த்தேன் பதாகையிலே முதலில் எழுத்து புதுடில்லியில் என்று இருந்தது அப்படி என்றால் இந்த புதுடில்லி என்கின்ற சொல்லுக்கு எப்பொழுது முழுமை வந்தது நூறு ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்பு ஆயிரத்தி தொள்ளாயிரத்தி பதினொன்றில் ஐந்தாம் ஜார்ஜ் மன்னன் தன்னுடைய பட்டமளிப்பு விழாவை இந்தியாவில் பல கோடி ரூபாய் செலவு செய்து இங்கே கொண்டாடினார் இந்தியா முழுவதும் இருந்து குறுநில மன்னர்கள் வந்தார்கள் கவிஞர்கள் வந்தார்கள் ஓவியக் கலைஞர்கள் வந்தார்கள் அப்படி தமிழன் என்று சொல்லடா தலை நிமிர்ந்து நிலடா என்று சொன்ன நாமக்கல் கவிஞரும் அந்த அந்த பரிசு பெற்ற ஓவியரில் ஒருவர் அவர் வந்தபோது ஒரு ஆணையை வெளியிட்டார் இந்த ஆண்டு முதல் ஆங்கிலேயனுடைய தலைநகராக புதுடில்லி விளங்கும் என்று அந்த புதுடில்லிக்கு தேர்வு செய்த இடம் இந்த பகுதி புதுடில்லி பகுதிதான் ஆனால் அவர்கள் உருவாக்கிய கட்டடங்கள் இருந்த இடம் எது தெரியுமா ஒரு சீக்கிய கிராமமாக இருந்த ரைசினா பிந்த் என்கின்ற ஒரு சீக்கிய கிராமத்தை அழித்துத்தான் பல நூறு குடும்பங்கள் இருந்த சீக்கிய கிராமத்தை அழித்து ஒற்றை குடியரசு தலைவர் தங்குகிற ராஷ்டிரிய பவன் குடியரசு தலைவருடைய இல்லத்தை அமைத்தார்கள் முன்னூற்றி முப்பது ஏக்கர் முன்னூற்றி நாற்பது அறைகள் கொண்ட அந்த குடியரசு தலைவர் இல்லத்தை அமைத்தார்கள் ஏன் சொல்ல வருகிறேன் என்றால் ஒரு கிராமத்தையே அழித்து ஒரு சிலர் தங்குவதற்காக ஒரு அரண்மனையை உருவாக்கி இருக்கிறார்கள் புதுடில்லியில் அப்படித்தான் இந்திய துணைக்கண்டம் முழுவதும் இருக்கிற பிற்படுத்தப்பட்ட ஒடுக்கப்பட்ட மக்களை ஒதுக்கி வைத்து விட்டு சில சில ஆதிக்கத்தன்மை கொண்டவர்கள் மட்டும் மேல்நிலை கல்வியிலும் மேல்நிலை பதவிகளிலும் ஆண்டு கொண்டிருக்கிறார்களே அதை குறிப்பிடுவதற்காகத்தான் இதை கூறினேன் ஆகவே பெரியோர்களே நமக்கு வாய்த்த தலைவர் அறிஞரவே ஆணை முத்து நாம் எல்லோரிடத்திலும் நெஞ்சை நிமிர்த்தி சொல்லக்கூடிய தலைவர் அந்த தலைவரை அவர் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களை ஏந்தி வருகிற தலைமுறை நீண்ட பயணம் செல்லும் நம்முடைய எண்ணங்கள் அவருடைய எண்ணங்கள் அனைத்தையும் வெல்லுவோம் அவர் விதைத்த அந்த சமூக சிந்தனை விதைகளை நெஞ்சில் தாங்குவோம் விதைப்பவர்கள் உறங்கலாம் விதைகள் உறங்காது வாய்ப்புக்கு நன்றி இந்த இடஒதுக்கீடு என்பது என்னுடைய புரிதலின் அடிப்படையில் இந்த சமுதாயமானது ஒரு கோட்பாட்டை நிர்ணயித்து வைத்திருக்கின்றது ஆறு வயது உள்ள உதாரணத்திற்கு ஆறு வயது உள்ள ஒரு மாணவனும் பதினைந்து வயது உடைய ஒரு மாணவனும் 
ஓட்டப்பந்தயத்தில் கலந்து கொள்ள வேண்டும் யார் முதலில் வருகிறார்களோ அவர்களுக்கு வெற்றி பரிசு இதுதான் இன்றைய அரசாங்கத்தின் கொள்கையாகவும் இட விகிதாச்சாரத்தின் அடிப்படை நோக்கமாகவும் இருக்க வேண்டும் என்று அரசாங்கம் விரும்புகிறது ஆனால் உண்மையில் அங்கு ஒரு சமதர்மம் ஏற்படுமா ஆறு வயது மாணவனும் பதினான்கு வயது மாணவனும் அவர்களுடைய உடல் வலிமை மன வலிமை பயிற்சி இவற்றின் அடிப்படையில் அவர்கள் ஓட்டப்பந்தயத்தில் சரியான முறையில் சரியான தகுதியை நிர்ணயிக்கும் ஒரு தீர்வாக நிர்ணயமாக இருக்க முடியுமா இங்குதான் இட விகிதாச்சாரம் ரிசர்வேஷன் என்பது அடிப்படை அவசியமாகிறது இட் இஸ் ஓன்லி வித் இன்ஸ்பிரேஷன் தட் வி கேன் ஆல் மூவ் ஃபார்வர்ட் அண்ட் கம் ஹெட் அதர்வைஸ் வி வில் ஆல்வேஸ் ஸ்டே பேக்வர்ட் பேக்வர்ட்னஸ் இஸ் நாட் ஓன்லி சோஷியோ இக்கனாமிக்லி டிஃபைன்ட் or even educationally defined these are ultimately a problem a symptom of something that has gone wrong in our minds so unless there is a mind set change in some other ways they say world view if we don't change our in hindi we'll say drishtikon a perspective a way of looking at things then nothing will change the world we will see the world the same way and we will stay backward so a lot of people wonder why this magazine which focuses on the issues of all the backward peoples all the backward okay the 85% 90% even why is it called forward it is because it is forward thinking my editorial is called forward thinking when we say he is a forward thinker it means that somebody is looking ahead we have to look back at our history to understand our roots as sunil sardar ji was saying before lunch unless we know our roots and we own our roots we cannot have any fruit and this is very very important so i have not that much to add all i have to say is that forward press on a regular basis including in the latest issue publishes the statistics as far as possible up to date we put our own rtis we make use of other people's rtis and we try and give the most up to date statistics on what is the true situation of reservation in this country and we break it down into different sectors so for example we have got in our middle section of this magazine the may issue which i'm holding in my hand savarna reservation in promotions okay that in up obcs and scs have virtually no representation in all the categories of government service now this will be amazing but it is almost the opposite as if the savarn the upper caste are having some kind of reservation quota which is more than 50% in up service so we keep emphasizing these kinds of things so there is nothing to disagree with here i have one little point which you may think is a very small point but those of you who have seen this um uh, leaflet here it talks about proportional representation in terms of actual breakdown and it says to obcs 57% i have no disagreement there it includes in that hindus muslims sikhs christians and other religious minorities in brackets in forward caste it includes in the 17 and a half percent hindus muslims sikhs christians and other religious minorities again there i have a little bit of problem yes 
among each of these groups, particularly the religious minorities, there are so-called upper caste groups. They are a minority among the minorities. But if you take the statistics or the demographics of only one religious minority, which I know very well, and that is the Christians. Now the Christians may not be more than three and a half percent, though actually they may be five percent even of the population. I would like to say that all the speakers who spoke here, yes, of course, they are stalwarts who have uh, worked and who have more experience in the field of uh, implementing reservation here, I mean in, in India. But as a, a beginner, youngsters, we have not much knowledge about uh, experience in how, how to make these things happen. But all of you have fingered to us saying that you, youngsters, have to take up this cause. Yes, of course, we will do it. If there are 100 seats and they usually come up with cutoff and what they say that students above the cutoff can, can get admission. So take for example, there are 200 students who have got above the cutoff, those seats are 100. The reservation is implemented according to 100. But the total intake if you take above the cutoff, so it will go more than 100. That is even they go up to 200. But when it comes to reservation, they go, they do only up to 100. So through our struggle, I mean, maybe I joined it recently, but uh, uh, Amarjing, Amar, Amarjit Singh, Amarji, Amar Singh Ji and Keda and we have other professors who are in the campus who struggle, who have, who have been fighting on this issue for a long time and which we are taken up now. Likewise, I realize this proportional communal Earlier we saw it reservation because reservation we see as a mercy that somebody has to give it to us. We look up, look upon to get a grace from the God. It was like that. But today when I saw this um, proportional communal distribution, I feel we have a right, and I have a right to demand that it's, you have to distribute all that is available, all the resources that is available in the country to all of us, whether it is, uh, I mean, according to the proportion to the population of general category, uh, OBCs, SCs and SCs. And I agree with this point and I have a conviction that yes, I will stand throughout my life for this cause, with this I, I end my talk. The All India Federation of Backward Causes, Scheduled Caste, Scheduled Traits and Religious Minorities was established in 1978 August at Madras. Myself, Comrade Ramavadi Singh and others took a tour in southern states, met several leaders belonging to backward classes, scheduled caste, and different religious leaders, and then assembled at Madras and established this federation. It was established in 1978. What are, what were the achievements of the federation? This federation, in cooperation with the back, we are backward class federation headed by Ramavadesi and Marxist Periyaris Communist Party, of which I am the general secretary. These three organizations took the message of reservation to all districts of Bihar during a period of 31 days commencing from 17th September 78 to 17th October 78. That created a commotion awakening among the backward classes, scheduled caste, and among Muslims also in Bihar. 
then 31 days virulent propaganda carried out on the platform, through platform, through was posted, through handles in lack, through was posted in thousand, that brought an awakening on the majority of the worker causes and the scheduled cause and the Muslims of the state. What was the result? Because of that propaganda, it was possible to launch an agitation, jail filling agitation, jail borough agitation for 10 days. During that 10 days, 10,000 people caught the arrest and they were imprisoned. What was the result? Muraji Desai, the then Prime Minister, undertook a tour to counter our propaganda, but as I said in the forenoon, he was not allowed anywhere to address the meeting. Chapels, stones were thrown at the platform. He had to withdraw to Delhi. That taught him a lesson that made him to think and therefore he came down to announce that the second battle class of commission will be formed and that announcement was made on 28th December 1978 in the Lok Sabha. That was the first achievement of the Federation. Constitution of a backward class commission. Why? Because it was Nehru. The much celebrated first Prime Minister of India, a Pakka Kashmiri Brahmin, who dictated the future prosperity of the backward classes in India in 1955 and 1961. How did he this? Nehru, at the instigation of Dr. Ambedkar in 1951, came forward to form the first backward class of commission under Kaka Kalekar chairmanship in 53. The report was given by Kaka Kalekar in 55, at the end of 55. Kaka Kalekar was the chairman. There was one Shiv Dayal Singh Chaurasiya of Lakhno who died in 1992. He was a member of the commission. Kaka Kalekar and Chaurasiya both went to Nehru and handed over the report. What did Nehru say? Nehru put a simple question, but a venomous question and a pertinent question. What was the question? He asked Kaka Kalekar, have you included any of the poor Brahmin sects in the list of backward classes? Who asked the question? Pandit Nehru. What guts we have to ask that question? Was it the duty of the backward class chairman to identify classes on poverty basis? No. Socially, one may be a Brahmin, may be illiterate. He may beg on the road. He may be a drunkard. He may be a nation. But still because he is born Brahmin, he was and he is respected by educated, by urban living, by rural living, by all sorts of people because it was so made that God made one man Brahmin, God made one man Kshatriya, God made the third man Vaishya, and God made the last Tato, status man Sudra, the fourth God. Therefore, Nehru 
who had an education in London, along with the King George V, who was a boy then, that Nehru began to think that he was a Brahmin by birth. And therefore he should be questioned. Have you included any of the Brahmin sects in the tobacco classes? Kaka Kaleka also was a Brahmin, but was a Gandhian, a real Gandhian. Therefore, he simply said, No, sir, it does not come under the terms of reverence given to me. I can't do that. I can't include any of the upper caste, any of the Brahmin, because they are poor. What did happen? Nehru threw the report on the ground in the presence of Kaka Karekar and S.D. Singh Taurasya. I have not met Kaka Karekar, but it was on 7th May 1978. I delivered a speech at the inaugural address at the U.P. Bakrika Convention under the leadership, chairmanship of Saurasya. That evening he told me all these details. He was eyewitness. What do you understand from this? Nehru, who had received education in foreign countries, a great experience, a traveled widely all over the world, he thought that he was a Brahmin by birth. And he developed a special interest in the advancement of the Brahmins. This is one thing. Next most famous act of Nehru was, in 1961 May, he called for a meeting of the cabinet, central cabinet, in May, and he decided that the government of India has decided not to approve not to accept the list of vapor classes identified by Kappa Kalekar. What was the fate of it? Without the list of vapor classes, reservation could not be implemented either in the state or at the center. Dr. Ambedkar prepared the list of vapor scheduled cars, that is called scheduled cars. Cars that he has been subdued, cause that he has been tabulated. That is called the scheduled cause. That list was prepared by Baba Sahib Ambedkar in 1935. And that enabled the scheduled cause to secure reservation in law-making bodies like legislatures and the Central Institute Assembly. That enabled the scheduled cause to secure reservation in education and employment at the center in 1943. It was Dr. Ambedkar who secured reservation for the scheduled cost 8.3% on 11th August 1943. Then, without a list of backward classes, how can the central government implement reservation to the backward classes? Only when we have got a list, we have to implement. If the list is disapproved, no question of implementing reservation. Therefore, Nehru was the first enemy of the backward classes. He put a seal in the face of the backward classes in May 1961. I have published all these thoughts and I have written all these thoughts to Dr. Manmohan Singh, the present Prime Minister, and Sonia Gandhi last week with authority, sufficient authority. Not only that, the Nehru, in 1961 August, wrote a delivery letter to all the provincial chief ministers asking them not to grant reservation in their respective state to backward causes on caste basis. Why? Caste basis is an important factor because we were deprived of getting educational opportunity. We were deprived of owning land. Most of the scheduled caste people, even today, do not own even one cent of agricultural land. Fifty percent of the scheduled caste do not own house sites of their own. Why? 
They were deborn by God of Manu. They were deprived by God of Manu that they should not own anything valuable. Anything valuable. They should remain laborers. They serve in the fields of the upper caste. Their body is their property. Their skeleton is their property. Their hands are the property. Their legs are the property. Nothing other than that as the property of the residual to caste man. Therefore, they could not rise up. They could not get awakening because of the art of education. Therefore, Nehru did the second inimical step in 1961 August. You imagine, please, all of you youngsters and the old people, imagine. Suppose he has granted a reservation in 1951 tobacco classes. How great, what great achievement would have occurred if tobacco classes in India? Long back, 51? How many years before? Therefore, such a heinous act, criminal act, were well, done by Nehru. What was the result? Because of that result, the present situation in the administrative setup in India, you know through one line in this pamphlet, we have distributed 40,000 pamphlets in Hindi, 5,000 pamphlets in English, 5,000 pamphlets in Tamil, all cost us 43,000 rupees to get printed. I got it printed from Tamil Nadu. Here it will be costly. We have distributed to all the people here in Delhi during the past 45 days. What does the figure say? This figure were not collected by us or by any private agency other than us. It was given as a statement by the government on the floor of Rajya Sabha on 18th November 2008. According to that statement, on the 1st of November 2008, total number of class 1 posts, total number of group 1 posts, like IAS, IPS, IRS, Another IAS, IES, another IES, IFS, another IFS. All these groups, in all these groups, on 1st November 2008, the total number of places filled up were 97,951. You must remember all these things. 97,951. Total, all throughout India. Out of 97,951, is it deceivable that the upper caste, like Brahmin, Chatri, Vaish, Kayas, Bunihar, Velara, Reddy, Kamma, Manan, Naya. Some 20 cars who form 17 and a percent in the total population of India, which has 121 crores of population today. What should have been the person at least 25 or 30? But they have captured, they are occupied. How many posts? Out of 97,951, they occupied 75,580 by posts. Out of 97,951 posts, these bloggers, Brahmin, Chatri, Chatri, one person in the whole of India. Why? One and a person, whole of India. Brahmin, five person in the whole of India, from Kathamarin to Kashmir. And South Indian upper caste, all these people constitute 
Not more than eighteen percent. These people have captured out of nineteen ninety-seven thousand seventy five thousand. You see that? Should it be tolerated? Should we keep quiet? Should we sleep? No. We, the so-called educated, the so-called learner, the advocate, the teacher, doctor, politician, who call themselves members of legislature and parliament, these people at least should become aware of this pitiable situation, or rather the anti national anti democratic situation what does the democracy mean according to ben tom who gave a definition for democracy ben tom described the greatest good of the greatest number is the essence of democracy who are the greatest in number in india Do you think that upper caste are minority? No. Upper caste all put together, they form less than eighteen percent. But the lower caste, fourth caste and the fifth caste are untouchable, and the tribe and the religious minorities like Muslims, Sikh and Christians. Who are Muslims? Who are Sikh? Who are Christians? Are they from Arabia? Are they from Jerusalem? No, they are our kinsmen. Kin. They have got our nerves. They have got our bones. They have got our blood. They have been our brothers long back, some three hundred years before. They got converted because of the upper caste oppression, cruel oppression, cruelty committed day and night. They got converted. They are our men. They are our brothers. They are uncles. They are sisters, mothers, like that. Therefore, these people, the backward classes, belonging to Hindu, Muslim, Christian, and Sikh, they are all. They constitute, including S C S C, eighty-five percent of the population. Because of that, Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Who did not have faith in bullets? He had faith in bullets. He thought that we could mobilize, we could create awakening, we could mobilize unity among diverse classes, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and religious minorities who are our brothers, Indian brothers. Nobody came from Arabia directly. A few hundred came as traders of arms. As importers, exporters, that's all. All Muslims and Christians are our own brothers. These people constitute eighty-five percent of the population. As I told you in the forenoon, he rather angrily said, "With a disappointment, much disappointment." Amir Amir Khan said, "It is astonishing to me. Why we?" The backward classes, a bigger minority. He called it bigger minority. A bigger minority, the scheduled caste a minority, the scheduled tribes another minority, and the religious minority, who form 85 percent of the population, dying together, capture the real seat of power that lies at them. What is power? You must distinguish between power at the state level and the central. Level. You must distinguish between power of the parliament, legislature, and administrative side. Parliament is vested in powers to make laws. Making laws is done by parliament members, but most of the parliament members are ignorant of law. They have never gone through the bill. They have never participated in passing the bill. No debate takes place for days and hours together on any bill without taking into consideration, without debating in the parliament. They pass laws within one hour or ten minutes. 
hundred lakhs in ten minutes, hundred lakhs in one hour, hundred lakhs in one day. Because why? The parliamentarians have become irresponsible. More, some of them are totally ignorant of the constitutional provision. They don't know what is constitution. I know directly some MPs have not seen the text of the constitution. The book, yeah, they have not, never seen it. Such is the pathetic condition of parliament. That parliament, the state legislature, is vested with making laws, passing bills, that's all. Who is implementing? It is only the IAS officer. An IAS officer, according to the Britishers laid norm, the collector of a district is the governor of the district. What does it mean? There may be a chief minister elected by the people, but the governor of the state dictates the government. He can recommend for dissolution of the government. What does it mean? Governor is all powerful, not the chief minister. He may be elected. This man, governor, is political appointee, appointed by politicians, prime ministers, ruling party people. Likewise, it is not, collector post is not like that. He is selected through examination, through qualification. That selected man really rules India. Gandhiji, when he returned after the second round table conference in London, he issued a statement in Arjan paper. What was the statement? He stated in his statement, Oh, India is not ruled by the Governor General. India is not ruled by the provincial governor. It is the 250 ICS officers. Present day IAS was designated as ICS, Indian Civil Service. This is Indian Administrative Service. The ICS officers, they are the real rulers. They are the eyes. They are the ears, they are the spies of the government of India. Really, they rule India. You be aware, be cautious. These were the words of Mahatma Gandhi in 1932, 32. Likewise, these 97,951 IAS, IAS officers, they are the real rulers. In that machinery, it is a machinery, administrative machinery. In that machinery, what is the share of scheduled cost? Scheduled cost has been enjoying reservation in central services, as I told you, from 1943 August. How many years? More than 70 years they had been enjoying. After 70 years, scheduled cost who are eligible today to get 15 percent has secured only 12 percent. Why? Because of the shoddy, faulty implementation of the nation. Meritorious candidate to SCs are uh, shuttled into general quota. Why? Meritorious SC must go into the general pool. Meritorious BC must be put into the general pool. Less meritorious BC, less meritorious SC only should be uh, put into the reserve quota because of the shoddy implementation, tardy implementation, faulty implementation, scheduled cost remains with 12%, though they are eligible for 15%. We, the Federation, had been demanding 17% for scheduled cost from 1993. Are you aware of this fact? Which party claimed it? Which party demanded it? Our federation demanded it. Now it is demanding. Likewise, scheduled the tribes. They are thrown out of the main stream of life. They are hills. They are mountains. They are forests. Away, far away from the mainstream. And they are deprived very much in education. 
Those who are Christian, they are highly educated among the saints. Those who are not Christian, they are less educated, poorly educated among the saints. What to understand? It is not the MP, it is not the MLA, it is not the ministers who are ruling the nation. It is the administrative, higher officers, group one, group two officers at the central level, group one and group two, RDO, DSP, like group one officers at the state level, they are the real rulers of the nation. Now we want that we, the greatest number, to secure our due share in all administrative sector and also in judiciary. Judiciary is the second enemy of the downtrodden classes. Because out of about 700 judges in the high court, 21 high courts in India, less than 100 are backward, scheduled, and scheduled to get three put together. Only less than 100. Out of 700 high court judges. What is the fun? Where will be judicial justice? How can we expect justice from the high court? You can't. Out of 31 judges in the Supreme Court, how many belong to SC? No SC to today. I think so. I may be correct or wrong. No SC. Some one or two BC may be there. I am not definite. But in high court, out of 700 judges today sitting, there are less than 100 judges. Then how will judiciary go in favor of the backward classes or scheduled to court? No. On any issue. <coughs> Suppose land acquisition issue. Who are affected? The small peasants belonging to backward classes. They are affected much. In rural part. But what does judiciary say? No. For public purposes. Or for the economic prosperity of a nation. For MNC, thousands and thousands of workers may be acquisition, uh, acquired by the government by force. Not even issuance of 4A four notice. Without issuing any notice, they simply publish in papers, advertise in papers, daily papers. One fine morning they come and say that they have come to acquire th- so and so's land. What is the fun? Therefore, judiciary is our second, third enemy, vital enemy, important enemy. It was the judiciary which said in 1963 that the total quantum of reservation to BC, SC, ST, to all three segments to remain always under 50. Who asked those fellows to say that? They are our paid servants. What examination did a judge write? IAS fellow wrote examination. IAS fellow appeared for interview. What examination did the high court judge write? No. They have got a group called Collegium. That means the thieves select themselves as greater thieves, bigger thieves. That's all. Therefore, judiciary is our, one of the main enemies. Therefore, all of us must think reservation is not the solution for unemployment. We don't say that reservation alone will not solve the employment problem, unemployment problem. No! It will not bring in prosperity to every family. Yes! But what is the real secret lying in it? Whatever is available for enjoyment in employment and higher education in common must be shared, must be distributed to all the people in proportion to the strength in population. Suppose we have got, got 50 legends. Now here there may be 100 people here. 50 legends means everyone can take only half a legend. Myself timing. Oh, I prefer one meeting. I want four ladoos. Am I not a thief? Youngster timing. Oh, I am young. You are old. I want ten ladoos. Is he not a snatcher? 
ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ಆಗೋದೆ ಲೈಕ್ ವೈಸ್ ಓ ಐ ಫೋರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೆರಿಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಲೇಡಿ ವಿಲ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಬಾಯ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಲೇಡಿ ಕೇರಿ ಒನ್ ಪಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಹೆಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಲೇಡಿ ಬಾಯ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಡೇ ದ ವಾಟರ್ ಒಂದು ರತಿ ವಿಲ್ ಎ ಬ್ರಾಮಿನ್ ಬಾಯ್ ಕಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಔಟ್ ದ ಡೇ ಇನ್ ದ ಶಾಪ್ no the barber does it. who is the barber who is the washerman who are the tailors who are the tillers we the greatest majority the shudra the bakut class the schedule to cast we are the greatest in majority then the greatest in majority should have all power due to them we claim our due the scottish people people of the scotland rose against england in the 17th century early 17th century they declared they gave a slogan no representation no taxation now you must all of you must say no representation to backward class no representation to scheduled class no representation to st no representing the minority no word go go back go back you must turn down every political party who comes to claim the vote for you from you what for they are getting vote to plunder the nation to amass money to amass wealth eh? that is the political system here and because our common people have not been taught the value of democracy the right or the duty of a voter as an individual the people are easily carried away by propaganda some of them become corrupt some of them take bread some of them take biryani some of them take bottle quarter half not all some we can't find fault with the justice it is common with the people even rich people they rob money from others they take money thank you therefore i request one every one of you that this are achievement last thing i am telling you in tamil nadu the reservation percentage of bc in 78 was only 31 it is our federation and our party marxist priya communist party both the organization represented the case the poor situation of the backward classes to the mgr government on 18th august 1979 i demanded increase the 31% to backward classes to 60% first mgr rejected my proposal i talked to him over the phone he told no even if you come i won't change the order of 9000 income limit and i won't increase the percentage of the then i met the then minister panduti ramachandran and convinced him august 7th october 29 how we are eligible there is one opinion issued by the supreme court in 1976 what was the opinion suppose in a state, the percentage of backward class of the IC can the government uh, and, and the state government reserve 80% of the seats for the backward classes, will it be against 16-4 up to 16-4? No! That was the statement made by a judge in a Dimitri and the Supreme Court. I quoted that authority and demanded that 31 percent should be increased to 60 percent. Within four months I got it increased to 50 percent. No man in Tamil Nadu, no other organization, no other party had any say in that matter. They, they never gave copy. They simply burned to the copies of the order. and sent to the ashes to the chief minister. That's all. 
They never thought of demanding such an increase in the percentage reservation. It is the Federation and our party that actually that the increase. Therefore, that was the second achievement of the Federation. Third achievement, it was our Federation which achieved for the first time in North India reservation of 20 percent in New York State in November 1978. These are all our achievements. I am saying this not to claim that we have done so much, but it is simply to explain to you that unless we make awakening throughout India, unless we bring the people to the state, unless we start fighting as we fought in 78 October in New York and 79 November in Delhi, myself and Ramavadeh Singh led an agitation that is uh, uh, blocking road agitation near the All India radio station New Delhi for 16 days. From 15 November to 79, first now December 79. We led the agitation. 1,800 people got arrested, put in fear jail. Only through awakening, only through mass agitation on the road, creating head, headache to the government. The government, government will come down, come down and heed it to us, request. Lastly, as our editor of the paper told, we must fight for reservation in private educational institution and private enterprise. It is a must. And we must fight for implementation of reservation in petrol pump, in other dealing, in all avenues where the government investment is there, where in granting of license is involved there. Therefore, with great effort, all of you, Delhi University comrades, Supreme Court Advocate comrades, Peria Ambedkar Service Society comrades, which was founded in 2008, they had extended total cooperation during the past 48 days. I am here for the past 48 days for this. Talk. I, I am thankful to you and to the Chairman, Secretary, General Secretary and Executive Committee members, General Body members of the Tamil Sangam for having given this hall, for holding the convention. And you have all come from the morning, 11 a.m. and sitting here till 6 p.m. with uh, responsibility with the calmness and listen to what all we said here.